In this video, we're going to randomly change the colors on materials on Collision. And we're also going to dive into the Unity documentation so you can see how it's relevant to Bolt units. Last time we made a state machine for instantiating this ball prefab. So it enters the make ball state and makes a ball. It hits a weight unit in the transition and loops around over and over and over again. And uh, this is from the first video of this sandbox series, 1B. The only difference from the script in that video is that I have quaternion get identity here so that the game object instantiates at rotation 000. And I'll show you my object variables really quick if you just wanted to whip up this graph without having to go back a video. The time between each ball is actually in the transition where that delay until next ball variable goes into the weight unit. So if you're confused on that, you can go back to the earlier video. Okay, so let's make the cube that's going to change colors. So right click and go to 3D object and cube. And then let's rename this cube to random color cube. And I'm going to reset the position, zero tab zero. Then I'll hold control to have snapping and bring up the cube around three on the Y. That's good. Then on the random color cube, I'll click add component and add a flow machine. Then I'll scroll down and click new for new macro. And then uh, in my macro folder, I'll save this macro as random color on collision and click save. Let's delete the start and update units. The event we want, right click and type on collision. And there are a few options we have. Let's start with on collision enter. We'll be using that one the most, but why not get the other ones too? So get on collision stay and on collision exit. And this is why I like sandbox projects because we can explore a lot of different ways of doing things. All right, uh, and actually a fun thing about Bolt is that we can code as the game is playing. So let's do that. I'm just gonna press play here. Okay, back to scene view. And then I'm gonna adjust this down uh, and adjust that up. Yeah, that looks right to me. Let's get a random color HSV node. And the one we want is hue min max, saturation min max, and value min max. That's what uh, HSV stands for. All right, I'm gonna connect that up here. And we have a color wheel output that'll be our random color. So uh, let's get a material set color unit and let's just get the one without any uh, property values. And then I'll hook that up and right away it turns orange then red uh, because we don't have a material here uh, for the input. Let's click on the color swatch because here's where you can see the hue, the saturation and the value. So let's hook the color output from the random color into the material set color. So what are we going to do about this material that's missing, the reason why the scene is red? We can try making a material because if you click on the cube and scroll down, what it says is that we have a default material here that's automatically added when we create Unity's primitive shapes. So let's make a material, uh, starting out by making a material folder. Just right click in your project folder, go to create, click on folder, and then right click on your material folder and go to create and select create material. And I'll call this material random color cube material. All right, then uh, let's go to the object variable tab and make a random color material, actually random color cube material to be consistent, uh, variable of type material. Then let's drag in that material we just made, random color cube material. And then now that we've made this variable, we can drag it into our graph area and connect it up. Okay, but the color still hasn't changed. And that's because even though we have a variable of this random color cube material on our cube, we still have the default material. So drag the random color cube material onto the cube and we can see it changed colors, but it's just black. Now, the reason that it's just black is because in our random color HSV node, all of our values are zero. So let's change that and extend the range to value max one because all these values go from zero to one. 
Okay, so now we're getting shades of gray. Uh, let's add some color to it. So go to saturation max and put one. And now we're getting different shades of red because our hue is also at zero, zero. So let's change the max to one. And now we're getting the whole range of colors. Now, I don't think I really want black, so I'm going to do 0.25 here. And then I like colors slightly desaturated, so I'm gonna do 0.75 here, just looks more natural. And 0.25 there, so we actually get colors. Anything less than that is pretty gray. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the cube and press Control D, Control D, and make a few different copies and sort of move them around. Uh, so as you can see, it, when we're setting the color on the material, we're setting it on everything that has this material. That could be useful for certain things, but what would be great is if we could use the same material, but uh, change each copy of it so that every object has a different color. All right, so I'll delete these extra cubes. And I also want to show you that if we stop the game, we lose that object variable that we made here but we keep everything that we did in the graph. So it's just something to be careful of if you're working in play mode. All right, so I'm going to delete the random color cube material get variable node. Take a look at the cube and we have a component called mesh renderer and we can actually use that to change the appearance of each uh, individual instance of the material. Since we swapped out this default material with the random color cube material during play mode, it reverted back to having the default material there. So I'm just going to drag that material back on the cube. Get a mesh renderer get material unit and also get a renderer get material unit because I want to show you that these two units do the same thing because the mesh renderer uses the renderer class for this. So this is a good time to check the Unity documentation for the renderer. Okay, so this is at docs.unity3d.com and uh, under renderer where it says a renderer is what makes an object appear on the screen. Use this class to access the renderer of any object mesh or particle system. Uh, renderers can also make objects invisible and the materials can be accessed and modified through them. See material. All right, let's check out the mesh renderer and it inherits from renderer. That means it uses or is based on renderer and it will implement the things that the renderer does. So let's click on renderer and scroll down to material. Material returns the first instantiated material assigned to the renderer. Okay, if you click on that uh, material right there, then it takes you to renderer.material or render get material, which is the exact node that we're using. So it says modifying material will change the material for this object only. If the material is used by any other renderers, this will clone the shared material and start using it from now on. And just to reiterate, this renderer.material is the same thing as this unit. Mesh renderer get material just uses renderer get material. So it's the same thing. In fact, with programmer naming, you can see that it says renderer material and the get is in parentheses. Okay, let's try the mesh renderer get material. That works. Let's try the renderer get material. And that also works. Now let's see if we can get different colors on each object. So I'm going to duplicate the random color cube with control D. And now we have different colors for each clone of that material. So now let's try this with a bunch of little cubes. And I'm going to grab one of the cubes and look at the material. And there on the material, it says random color cube material, and it says instance. So that's because this render get material is making a clone of the material that we're setting the color on. If you look at the ball, the ball material just says material. And um, I'm going to just go to the original ball material and change the color on it and make it white. And there you can see that uh, it changes it for all of the balls because they're all using the same instance of the material. And of course we have on collision stay. This event will fire every frame that another collider is touching this collider. So that's kind of a fun effect. And then on collision exit, of course, uh, it's as the ball exits the collider. So you get a little bit of a trail effect as the colors change behind the sphere. And you can actually plug in all of the events. And that's kind of fun too. In the next video, we're going to work through some C-sharp and Bolt and make a conveyor belt. See you there.